Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season we're addressing the various parables of Jesus which are contained in the Gospels. And this week, the parable of the lamp, which is found in all of the first three Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. As parables go, this one is very brief. Let's take a look. You are the light of the world. A city seated on a mountain cannot be hid. Matthew 5.14 The Gospel of Matthew is the only one that contains this part. By referring to his disciples as the light of the world, Jesus is not only saying that they're needed to help the world find its way around, and that what they have to offer is important for the world's well-being, but that their teachings will assist the people of the world as long as the people are able to see them. Calling them the light of the world definitely seems like a compliment, but there's a literal aspect to it as well, as we'll see in the rest of this parable. Jerusalem wasn't on a mountain, so this city is metaphorical. Jesus is saying that when a city is high up and out in the open, everyone sees it. This is related to the comment about light, because there are always lights in cities, and you can see them from quite some distance away at night. Even back then, there were often lamps, or in other areas of the world, torches or candles being used, even late at night in certain parts of the city. In this verse, therefore, Jesus is subtly implying that the disciples should allow their teachings and testimony to be seen and heard plainly, like a city on a hill. However, he proceeds to get more specific about that in the next verse, and unlike the last, some version of it is found in all three Gospels. Neither do men light a candle, and put it under a bushel, but upon a candlestick, that it may shine to all that are in the house. Matthew 5.15 and he said to them, Doth a candle come in to be put under a bushel, or under a bed, and not to be set on a candlestick? Mark 4.21 Now no man lighting a candle covereth it with a vessel, or putteth it under a bed, but setteth it upon a candlestick, that they who come in may see the light. Luke 8.16 A bushel was a type of large basket often used for carrying fruits and vegetables in those times. In Jerusalem, olives, grapes, figs, and so on would have been carried in these bushel baskets. If I were to light a candle and put a bushel over it without any candlestick or candle holder to keep it upright, the candle would just end up lying on the ground and be very close to going out. If the bushel was made tightly enough, it would also limit the flow of oxygen, making it even harder for the candle to stay lit. In fact, candles are often put out in a very similar way to this, by covering the candle with a small bowl or cup until the flame runs out of oxygen and goes out. In the same way, Jesus is saying that covering up the truth causes it to die as well, so that people can't find it anymore. It's only by displaying it, holding it up, that people are able to see that truth, and it has the effect it was meant to have. We as Christians, and as truth seekers, are therefore under an obligation not to hide the truth from people, and to try to communicate it as best we can, so that they can benefit from it too. As a side note, I've heard some people say that the Jews didn't use candles at this period in history. They used oil lamps instead. In fact, the Greek text that the Gospels were translated from is ambiguous as to what kind of light source was being referred to in this parable. Even the Romans, who'd been making and using candles for about 500 years at this point, would have used lamps much more often. However, the Latin Vulgate, the official Bible of the Catholic Church, clearly refers to a candlestick in these verses with the word candelabrum, so it's entirely possible that Jesus was talking about candles here rather than lamps. Next, the unjust steward. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.